Hey guys, welcome back to the next stage of the 74 TR6 restoration. I'm saying next stage because in the last video we completed most of the, the major, as I like to say, welding, <laughs> because the welding is never over, but the major part of it where we do all the rust removal and patches and stuff like that, that's done. So if there's a little bit of welding here and there, that's not unexpected. And now we are into the next step. And uh, what is the next step? I think if we talk in general, preparing the body for paint and after that installing it on the frame, which means uh, we're gonna do the bottom of the body, we're gonna do the inner fenders, we're gonna do inside, we're gonna do the engine bay, we're gonna do the boot, we're gonna do the inside of the fenders even, and that's where we're gonna stop. The rest of it probably is gonna be done in a paint shop, the rest of it meaning the exterior, the exterior panels, doors, etc. But we will see, the whatever I can do, I will do in advance here, so we don't need to uh, rely on a paint shop. So when the body is prepared for paint, it's gonna have to land on the frame and that's how it's gonna go for exterior paint, paint to the body with the chassis. So to put the body on the chassis, we have to prepare the chassis as well. This means we need to assemble the suspension in the first place, run all the brake lines, we need to run the fuel lines. And of course, we need to have the engine and the transmission installed so we can put the body on top. So uh, this is a lot of work. These next two steps with their sub steps, that's a lot of work. So we have to be really smart in how we organize that. So I said in my previous video that I was gonna start working in the engine bay, but actually I think that it's smarter if we look into our parts bins over there and see what we have. And I think these boxes need to come out now and we need to see what we have as parts for the engine, what we don't have as parts for the engine and uh, order these parts so we have time to get them here. Also suspension, if we want to assemble the suspension, we need to see what we have as suspension parts and whatever we don't have, we have to order. Of course, we're going to order new bushings, we knew, we're going to order new uh, bearings for everywhere and uh, the differential also needs to be uh, at least the seals needs to be changed. So I think it's a smart idea if we take a tally, <laughs> I should say, on what we have as parts and what we don't have, order everything, and by the time the parts come, we'll have enough time to do engine bay and our interior of the car and stuff like that. We even have to paint the extension, the suspension parts because they're primered, but they are not painted. So we, we're gonna have to do that. Uh, I think that's a smarter idea. So I cleaned up the table behind me and now I'm gonna start pulling out boxes and containers from over there and uh, we will see what we have as suspension and engine. Maybe we're gonna do it in two steps. First, we're gonna look at the suspension parts, then we're gonna put them away and then we're gonna pull out the engine parts. We will see how we're gonna do it. As soon as we start, we're gonna figure out what's the best way. So yeah, let me get Locking. <laughs> All right, huh. I'm halfway through to here, so I pulled everything that is concerning suspension so far from the shelf, but I still have all these parts up there that are mm, de-rusted. If you remember for this, I had an experiment with electrolysis and that worked really well. But we're gonna talk about that later. So uh, I pulled most of the suspension, the big suspension components from what I had there on the shelf and uh, I'm laying it out on the table I'm not ready yet, but just wanted to show you here. I found this um, suspension rebuilding kit. 
that I bought uh, when we were buying parts for the 73 TR6, we started buying also parts for the 74. So I have some of the parts already, I need to go through them. So this here is one whole front suspension rebuilding kit. The only thing is it is rubber and I don't like these rubber bushings. So we can order this in poly and these, uh, but uh, here I have a tronion kit. So I wanted to go through it and uh, see if I have all the parts and I'm gonna put it back in the box. But before I put it back, I wanted to show it to you because after that, I'm gonna show it to you as a box. <laughs> Anyways, let me organize it a little. All right, so it looks like the kit is complete. Just wanted to make sure we have everything for the Tronion rebuilding, including the little caps on top and everything. So uh, yeah, this kit is complete. The only thing is that these bushings, the upper and the lower uh, wishbones bushings are rubber and we don't want rubber, we want poly like this. So these we're gonna have to order and these we're gonna have to order. These I don't think we're gonna need because we have new bow joints here. Yeah, we even have all the collars for the front and the rear springs. We have two sets of uh, sway bar bushings. We have two sets of um, steering column bushings. We have the what is it? The bow joints. We have the sway bar links. The only thing we don't have is the tie rod ends. So we have to order these. And for the rear, we have the links for the shock absorbers. Uh, we have all the bump stops, the plugs for the trailing arms. We have another set of bump stops. <laughs> and the thing is, we only have one bushing for the trailing arms which are sitting there so we have to order three more of these okay i just wanted to show you all that because i'm gonna put it back in that box and we're gonna keep bringing parts <music> So this is what we have. We have a complete set for the front suspension. I divided everything, one here, one here, and uh, made sure that I have enough parts for uh, both sides. I even have some extra parts here in the middle that I'm gonna show you later. So um, I even tried to put them together more or less how they're gonna be so I can I make sure that I have everything. So this is the lower wishbone arms. Uh, with the mounting brackets. This is the sway bar uh, mounting bracket that comes here somewhere. I even have this little guide for the brake line. Uh, the upper control arm with the, what was that called? Forgot the name. Anyways, <laughs> I have that. The vertical link with um, the tronium. The, the caliper mounting plate. Uh, this is the lower plate, I think it's guess the rear plate and the spring, caliper, um, the brake discs or the rotors. They, they look in a good shape. They are pretty rusty now, but I'm pretty sure they can come back to life. And of course the hub, which we'll need to buy new bearings for both hubs. Uh, the shock absorbers are not the best ones, so I guess we're gonna need new shocks. And uh, the tronions, this one, let me try and see. This is the left handed one. It is very good, absolutely no play or anything. So, sorry about the noise. So looks in a good shape I don't know how well you can see but it is in a good shape so I'm not worried about this one but this one 
this is the right-handed one, so it comes out nicely again. This one, if you see here, this is no good. The threads on the tronion itself look good, but here it is the threads are heavily corroded. But luckily, we have an extra extra vertical link, which is the same size because you know they are handed. But luckily, the one that we have extra threads nicely and it's in a good shape. So I guess this is the one that we're gonna use. So whatever we have here on this side, we have also here. And uh, we have, of course, the steering link. So for front suspension, oh, and here we have bearings and stuff, but we're gonna order the kit anyways, the rebuild kit for the hubs. So for the front suspension, we have everything. Uh, also, since we're still in the front, we have the steering column, which we said we need to order new tie rod ends, the boots, um, we have the bushes for here. So we have the brackets for the sway bar. These look distorted. I don't know if that's normal. Is this the normal shape of these? I'm not sure. So we might need to order new ones. Uh, and that's for the front end. Then moving forward, we are at clutch because we said we're gonna look at the engine later, but and we have the transmission, but we need to make sure that we can assemble them together, right? So we need to order new clutch. But the clutch plate is not in a good shape, so I need to polish that and see if it can come back to life. But looks like we're gonna need a new, new clutch plate. And new clutch, of course, because this one is old and we don't know. We don't want to put it there and then find out that we have problems with it. So. We're gonna need new clutch. Then uh, we also have two drive shafts, but uh, we're gonna inspect them and we will see which one we're gonna use. And of course, we're gonna order new new joints for them. We, we wanna rebuild them before we put them back on. Um, and for the front, of course, for the frame, we have the radiator protection plate uh, and this cross member that I don't know what the name is. So, that's for the middle of the car. Also, we have the transmission mounts here. We have one extra, which is gonna go here with these parts. These are all my extras here. For whatever reason, we have two more rear plates. We have all these extra parts that we're not gonna touch for now. We don't need them. So transmission mounts, we have here different types. I don't know which one we're gonna use. And then uh, at the back, we have the, the trailing arms. They need to be cleaned and painted. We have to get rid of the bushes and install the new bushes. We said we had one bush for there and then we need to, so we need to order three more, but we have the bump stops. We have all the plugs. We have three sets of shocks and we're gonna have to see. I think these are the ones, the ones on top are the ones that came off the car but we're gonna look closely at them and see which ones we're gonna use, but I am definitely gonna order the rebuilding kit and I'm gonna rebuild whatever we're gonna use. And um, we have new links for them, as I showed you before. And then we have four axles here. Uh, I'm pretty sure these two are the ones that came off the car and i think they are in a good shape but again we're going to inspect them we're going to order new boots of course new u-joints um for here and here yeah i don't think we're going to have to rebuild them they don't look in a bad shape so we're going to just clean them and paint them and we might even look at these so i'm not sure which ones we're going to use this sliding axle the other half is on the diff which is still over there, I didn't want to bring it out, but for whatever reason, it wasn't even taking off the diff. So now I know what we have suspension wise. The only thing is now the hardware. Um, this is all the hardware here that we took when we took apart the suspension. 
So I'm assuming we have all the bolts. For the nuts, I'm gonna definitely have to order a whole bunch of uh, nylon nuts, new ones, because we don't wanna use these old ones. But for the bolts, I'm assuming we can use the old bolts. There's nothing wrong with them. So I don't know whether I should start playing with the hardware and see if I have everything. Maybe I should, huh? So I can order whatever I, I don't have. Yeah, anyways, let me try and do that. All right, these are all the bolts that we had in this box. Well, we have some more, but I don't think these are suspension bolts, so we'll see if we need anything more. And of course we have all the washers and uh, nuts here. We're gonna use the washers, but the nuts and the spring washers, we're gonna buy new ones wherever we need a spring washer, because if we need, if we use a nylon nut, we don't need a spring washer. Uh, I also found those uh, stops that, I don't know the right name of them, but they are the ones that prevent you from oversteering. Uh, they mount here at the back of the tronion, and then they just block, they just limit your steering. Also the spacers, and these are all the bolts, so now I'm gonna go through the bolts and see what goes where. Okay, so that gave us a very good idea of what we have and what we don't. And I really am happy with our results now because turns out we have lots of things that I didn't know, like the suspension rebuilding kit, for example. So, yeah, I'm going to sit down on the computer now. I'm going to order everything and uh, I'm not gonna put anything away yet because I might need to come back and check something. And uh, once I order all these parts, I'm gonna come back. We're gonna put these back, not in boxes, not on the shelf. We will see somehow organized because very soon I'm gonna have to start going through them. And for example, I have to clean these, I have to paint these. Some of them are already cleaned, which is nice. So I'm just gonna have to scuff these quickly and paint them and so on and so forth here what i didn't show you is the brakes oh actually let me look at that because we also need to run the brake lines so we have to know what we have and what we don't like okay we have those uh splitters those three-way connectors which is good uh, we have these cylinders which we might need to order new ones uh these i don't think we need to order new ones these i these i can clean and they're gonna work but the the brake cylinders they're not expensive we're gonna order new ones because it's brakes you know and uh, everything else i think we have we have the springs we need new brake lines we need new brake hoses we're gonna make our own brake line. So we're gonna order brake line and we're gonna order fittings and we're gonna get, we're gonna make our own brake lines. Okay. So I ordered everything that I needed for the suspension. I mean, I made a list and uh, I should, I'm just gonna wait for the engine parts for the engine order and I'm gonna order everything together. So this is everything about the suspension that we'll need on this car, plus the new parts that are gonna come. So I'm gonna just leave them on this table. It's actually a gurney. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna leave them as they are here on this table because Next, after I finish with the body, I'm gonna have to start taking care of these. Uh, these are all the parts that are left over. The shocks are shot, but uh, plates, extra rear plates, um, the extra shocks, 
and everything that is extra so for now i'm gonna put it back on the shelf just in case we need something in case i'm missing something or in case some of this is bad so anyway the clutch plate i just polished it to make sure that it is uh, it's not rusted badly and it's beautiful so we don't need another plate we only need another disc anyways okay so i'm gonna put everything away now and we're gonna start bringing parts for the engine from there all right so whatever we have almost everything is on the table the only thing that i don't have on the table is the block and uh crankshaft they're still on the shelf and i'm not going to bring them i'm going to talk about them later so it looks like uh like everything else we have two engines here <laughs> we have two heads we have two rocker shafts two camshafts we have like thousands of springs and tappets and uh, valves and for the springs and tappets we have a lot but i think we're gonna have to still buy new ones because that's what worries me one of the springs is in this condition which means that another 11 i guess are pretty close to this condition so also the tappets some of them have really bad face here they're like pitted and uh look at this one <laughs> so I think we're gonna need new tappets, I guess new valves. We have thousands of push rods, we have thousands of studs, two clutch slave cylinders, um, even the mounting plate for the slave cylinder. We have another one somewhere I noticed on the shelf. Two distributors that, I don't know, this one doesn't look very good. I think this one is the one that I took out from the 73 because there was something wrong with it. I have to watch my video about the 73 dr 6 and see what was wrong with this one. And then we have uh, two oil filter cans, two pumps. One of them is cleaned up already and painted. Maybe, maybe it's good, I don't know. Um, the alternator though, I don't know, we're gonna have to test it. But it was taken apart, I guess maybe for painting because we have the, the cooling fan there, so maybe that's why it was taken apart, I don't know. We have a starter that was taken apart and the uh, solenoid was broken. So I don't know whether the starter is good or not, or it's only the solenoid. We have another starter here. So all these are things that we have to test. But again, now we are looking only into parts that we need to rebuild the engine and assemble it and put it on the frame so we can put the body on the frame after that. So uh, auxiliaries we can work on later, even carbs we can work on later. For now, we just need to be able to rebuild the engine and put it on the chassis. So the main components only. What else? We have all the connecting rods here. They look good. And like I said, two heads this one looks like it's been cleaned looks like it's been cleaned once upon a time i think the previous owner started working on this engine because i think the crank and the block has been machined so we're gonna check them again uh, so i think he worked on his head too in the meantime uh, this one is from another engine it's never been cleaned i think it's uh, the way it came off doesn't mean in, it's in a bad condition it's just not cleaned after it's been taken there's still also uh, residues of a gasket here yeah and then i have the flywheel the fan and a lot of hardware here which i'm not gonna go through i hope i'm gonna have everything if two engines have been taken apart hopefully i'm gonna have enough hardware huh? <laughs> So the camshafts look good. They both say 399. So I have to look them up and see what does that mean. Uh, what is this? 88 311 So they are the same, I guess. That's the stock camshaft and they don't look bad. So we can use one of them. Of course, we're gonna buy new timing gears and chain. I wanna check definitely the rocker shafts because 
that's the one that I took off of uh, John's head. And look at this, it's been really worn. That's the front end, which normally doesn't get oiled enough. I'm gonna have to check these too, but especially the front ends and make sure that these are good. If not, we're gonna buy a new one. The shaft is like 18 bucks, it's not expensive. And here we have all the studs. These are the mounting studs for the uh, stands, for the rocker shaft stands. And these are the bolts for the cover. Uh, two front covers, the engine mounts, the oil pan, and we have two front and two rear engine plates. So I guess we have enough of everything. So we just have to buy whatever we need to rebuild it. We're missing pistons. That's what <laughs> I forgot to say. So we don't even have one piston, but I measured like a year ago, I think, or maybe even more. I took out the block. I cleaned it up. It was, there was a little bit of surface rust on it, but I cleaned it up and I measured it. And I'll show you the measurements. It measures plus 20 so I believe it was machined and uh, I'm just gonna need to hone it I think one of the cylinders was a little bit off and just needs to be honed and I borrowed the tool from uh, my friend Eugene like two years ago when I still have his tool because I wanted to hone this cylinder and see if I can uh, just make it a little bit bigger because it was a little bit too small and we'll see about that and then the crank i did the same thing i took it out it was surface rusted but i polished it and i measured it and it measures i don't remember what it measures but i have all the measurements in my computer so we're gonna check that and uh, then it is of course now it's uh, oiled with wd-40 and it's sitting here wrapped in this plastic hopefully it didn't flush rust again so uh, now i'm gonna go through everything that i can and uh yeah and then i'm gonna sit down on the computer and i'm gonna make an order for parts for the engine as well and then we can order everything and by the time everything comes we can clean up this and then go back to the body so yeah let me do that oh actually i wanted to show you the measurements of the block so it's January 19, 2018. So over two years ago, I measured this engine. <laughs> anyway, so um, here. So what I normally do with engines is I measure each cylinder. So I measure it in three positions. Um, so cylinder, if you look at the top of the cylinder, I measure this way, this way, and then this way, I think. So I measure in three positions and then in three depths, I measure top, center and bottom and that's how much bigger the this measurement is than my gauge set because i set my gauge to a certain measurement so i set my my gauge at uh, 295 and uh, this means that this measurement for example is two inches and nine five seven four ten thousandths of an inch this one is the same, this one is the same. So basically I take nine measurements of each cylinder, three at the top, three at the center, and three at the bottom. And this tells me, uh, for example, at the top, I have three different measurements. The smallest one is 74, the biggest one is 80, and this means I am out of round by six ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, in the center, the same. I am out of round three and out of round six at the bottom. And uh, so my maximum out of round is six ten thousandths of an inch, which comes here. So this number one cylinder has out of round six ten thousandths of an inch, which is perfectly acceptable because the tolerance I think is about 15. I'm not sure. Anyways, and then I do the same for the vertical in the same I look at all the three measurements in the same position. In first position, top, center, and bottom. I have those measurements. The smallest one is uh, 295.74, the biggest, or 295.73. The biggest one is 295.80. So the taper on, the, on this cylinder, because I'm measuring on the same position, three top, center, and bottom, so that shows me the taper 
if it is tapered or not and the taper on this cylinder is 7 10 thousandths of an inch which is perfect so in the second position is 5 in the third position is 5 so the biggest one is 7 10 thousandths of an inch which comes here so these are my general measurements of this cylinder i have maximum taper of 7 10 thousandths uh, out of round of 6 10 thousandths of an inch and then my biggest measurement of all these nine measurements is uh, 80, is this one, I guess, 80, which means 295, 80, and that comes here. So for each cylinder, I have these measurements. So after that, all these one, two, three, four, five, six, the findings for each cylinder, I put in this chart here. So the maximum measurement of, if, of each cylinder is this, this the minimum measurement even I took and is this uh, this is the out of round of each cylinder the taper of each cylinder the this is the range so my smallest cylinder is 12 10 thousandths of an inch smaller than my biggest cylinder and that's this cylinder cylinder number five uh, which is two nine five six eight and everything else is above 72 you see 72 75 78 80 80 so i was hoping that this cylinder cylinder number five i can bring bring it like three four five ten thousandths of an inch to make it bigger so it matches more or less the other ones because this range is a little bit too big for me i think it should be some this cylinder should be a little bit bigger but all these measurements are corresponding to plus 20. So I need to order pistons and rings, uh, plus 20 tau, and everything is gonna be fine with this engine. So yeah, that's my only issue, this cylinder. Even as it is, it's not bad, but I just want it to be a little bit closer to all the other ones. And same with the crank. I measured all the journals. These are the measurements of my journals. So that's the spec for factory measurement. It should be between 10 and 15. So 231, 10, 10 thousandths of an inch, 231, 15, 10 thousandths of an inch, that's the spec. And we are even bigger than the spec here, like two thousand bigger, not two thousand, it's uh, two ten thousandths and one ten thousand bigger here. So uh, the, the crank is stock, it's perfectly stock. So that's why we need main bearings that are standard. And the pins for the connecting rods are the same so this is the measurement that i have for each pin and this is the tolerance between 50 and 55 we are 52 53 55 50 52 53 so they are perfect so we need standard connecting rod bearings and that's it so based on this what i did two years ago i know what to order as uh, piston strings and bearings all right so i spent some time on the computer and on the, the most website and this is the list with the parts that i need so this is only for the suspension and the engine look at the total huh? <laughs> nice that's american dollars so anyways uh, i'm gonna place the order and then i'm gonna clean up the table in the in the other room and we're gonna keep going with the body so now the next step, like I said, is to finish the engine bay nicely and uh, we're gonna keep going from there. Just cleaning up and painting and uh, seam sealing and stuff like that on the body. And once we get all the parts for the suspension, we're gonna assemble it. But why am I saying that? Like I told you that already, didn't I? <laughs> what the next steps are. So uh, yeah, I don't know how long this video is, but I think I'm gonna end it here because it is a good uh, starting point for a next video so whatever the length this is gonna be it so thanks for watching guys thanks for commenting and subscribing as usual thanks for sharing my videos uh, a lot more subscribers lately which is good thank you so much guys whoever's new on the channel there's many cars that are involved in our restorations there's uh, this uh, up, recent update video you can go there and see what cars we're working on and what's in the future so see you soon bye